Charity shops, opening again soon, but are you going to the correct one? Hello, welcome to How to Vintage. My name is Jonathan, and this is my face. Today, we are looking at charity shops. With lockdown coming to an end, it's gonna be soon time to get back out there and start picking from those charity shops. But I was posed a question the other day. Somebody told me that they'd heard that the best charity shops are in the town center, to which I laughed, because that's the daftest thing I've ever heard. So, what I'm gonna do is break down what the charity shops are, where the blessed place, the blessed? The best place to go is, um, and why, um, basically give you the best opportunity to find those sweet, sweet grails. I don't know why I say grails. I don't do cool words. Anyway, first bit, charity shops. You got two types, uh, two types of charity shops. Chain charity shops, British Heart Foundation, Bernardo's, Cancer Research, RSPCA, etc. Cat Protection. These are all chain charity shops. If you look, you'll see all of them have their own vintage retail stores online, either in an auction form on eBay or on their own website, where they sell the stuff you would be looking for, for retail price. And then you have your independent charity shops. These are your ones in little villages that might support local charities, and they only actually sell in those shops what they receive and very rarely pick through their own stock to sell separately. Now, where do we find these charity shops? Now, any of the chain ones you're going to find in the town center. Now, how these chain ones work, regardless, if you, if you take your stuff to the British Heart Foundation, it doesn't go into that shop. It goes into a sorting room where all that stuff gets separated off and then it gets distributed back out. So Bernardo's, for example, near me, we have a Bernardo's sorting center. Everything that gets dropped off at Bernardo's actually gets picked up, taken to the sorting center. They sort it, strip out the stuff they want, and then redistribute whatever's left back out to the charity shops. Obviously there's some kind of, there is obviously a grading process they follow. So those charity shops do get something useful, but a majority of the time, you're not gonna find much in the way of grails. Now in fairness to Bernardo's, I just use it as an example. That's probably my favorite of all the, uh, the chain shops. Now when it comes to location, high street retail is expensive. It's an expensive game and charities that the chain charities are the only ones that can actually afford it. So you'll very rarely find independent charity shops in the town center, um, which is also why you're very unlikely to find the best stuff in the town center. So whoever told people to go to the town center, it just obviously has no clue what they're talking about, frankly. Um, you don't want to go anywhere near the town center. That is like the last place you want to be. Where you want to be is you want to be out in the villages. Out in the villages where your local charities are, these are independent charities that you should be looking to support because they're looking to support your local community. But they're also more likely to have stuff you will want to resell. And then you've got rich areas and poor areas. Rich areas, obviously you're going to get some good stuff, but don't pass up on the poor areas. Now I'm going to let you into a little secret here. Doncaster is a poor town. I've lived in some of the poorer areas of Doncaster. I have found some of the best stuff in those poorer areas. When I was at school, or when I just finished school and I was at college, the people from the poorer areas were the ones who saved the money to buy the expensive items because they looked up to the big brands. They wanted the Burberry, they wanted the expensive Nike, they wanted that higher end quality stuff. And what happens is they'll buy it, wear it a few times, they'll look after it because it's expensive to them. And then in a couple of years time, the mum will come in, clean out the room and just shift it to the local, sort, uh, local charity. Right, that's the reality of it. Now, you can go to more expensive areas. One of the areas I like to go picking is up in the North Yorkshire Moors. Go up to Ripon, Moulton, all those little uh, villages up there. They do have little independent charities, generally run by a granny. But all the stuff in there is donated from farmers, 
um, people who've got big estates. And you will find so many Aaron knit jumpers, barbers, bell staffs, etc. in those little places. So I never pass up on the villagers. The other thing you got to remember as well is these independent charity shops, they can't afford a high street retail. Now, can you get stuff from high street retail? Of course you can, but you're in for a far longer grind if you're going to use high street. Um, is it the M MDNA one, the one for motor neuron disease? Um, they tend to have everything at three quid. Literally everything in store is three quid. That's a good charity shop to go for as well. So when we come out of lockdown, don't rush straight into the charity shops. You've got to remember, these charity shops have not been open basically for a year. At best, six months. They're going to have so much stuff to process. Now, you can go straight in and probably pick up a few bits, but a majority of that stuff is going to be the stuff you picked through six months ago because they've not really been there to kind of process what's going on. Give it a week or two and then go in because in a couple of weeks when they've actually caught up with all the work, got back into the rhythm and stuff, that's when you're going to see a lot of the new stock flooding in. So always worth bearing in mind when you're looking at that, that's when to hit. Now, conversely, car, bo uh, car boots, the secular car boots come up, get in the son of a bitch. People are going to be going there straight away to get rid of all the stuff they've accumulated basically over lockdown. But back to the charity shops. Key points. High street is shit. The chain run um, things. Chain run charity shops which pick out their own stock. Independent charity shops are your best bet. Not only that, you want to support the independent charity shops. Like British Heart Foundation, most of their money goes to their CEO, so they can go fuck. Independent charity shops, the people there are volunteers. They're not paid to be there. They're there because they want to be. And that money goes towards helping your local community. So they're the ones you'd go for. And don't be afraid to travel out to little villages and look for the odd one or two. There's a village near me. It's actually between me and Preloved. Um, and sometimes on the when I went to Preloved before... Obviously, this is like way before lockdown. I'd stop in the little village and I'd go to those little independent charity shops. Every single time, there was always something worthwhile in those independent charity shops. Literally every single time. Tommy Hilfiger, Yves Saleron, um, everything. Nike, Adidas, you name it, you will find it in those independents because they're not selling it online. So yeah, lockdown's ending. You guys are going to be out there having fun. I don't do charity shops anymore. I'm far too lazy for that stuff. So I hope, hope you all the best in finding those good things. And if you do find some good stuff and this advice has been useful to you, comment below. Use them. I'd like to hear from you. Until then, if you haven't checked out our website, www.howtovintage.com, it has a full list of wholesalers, discount codes, etc. And it's all for free. If you want to support the channel, there are Amazon links to the stuff that I use in my day-to-day -day basis, which you could also use in your day-to-day -day basis. There's no extra cost on it. You're just buying it off Amazon, and I get 15p every time you buy one of those things. Uh, there is a buy me a coffee thing. If you want to buy me a coffee, completely up to you. It's not necessary, though. So until next time, my name's Jonathan, and this is all about charity shops.